Francisco, I'll be purposeful to leave my videotapes uncopyrighted. Copy them and give them to your friends, man. Get them saved. I said, sir, would you look at what you're teaching your students? You're teaching your students that all the dogs in the world came from a rock. <laughs> I had one lady, I'm sorry, a woman, come to me after a debate one time. She was steaming down the aisle, boy, she was mad. Oh, I could tell I'm in trouble now. I stood there quivering in my boots, you know. She walked up and she said, tonight you said we believe we come from a rock. We do not believe that. And just well, one not too much over too, too short a period of time. And yet you think humans and dogs came from a rock. <laughs> well, well, the Bible says I don't. came from yeah, dogs. I don't know why that's so unbelievable. You th well, yeah, but with the no, Creator... Actually, again, if we, if we wanted to be precise, you believe that. You believe that humans come from, from, uh, from dirt. I believe humans I don't. came from dirt with a designer. You believe humans came from dirt without a designer. Um, that is exactly what you believe. Really? Now, where, where did I publish that kind of theory? Do you believe... If you're giving me reference, I'll, I'll believe it. You believe all life forms had a common ancestor. Right. This ancestor arose spontaneously somehow through some kind of process yet undiscovered. It, right. From, from the oceans, which is the... Not necessarily from the ocean. Uh, okay, from the, minerals on, sure. from the minerals on Earth. They came from a rock. Oh, you mean, oh, oh, you're talking, you're calling any chemical a rock. Oh, well, in that sense, yeah, sure. If so you, yes, you if do you believe in the word rock to mean any chemical any, uh, that, that was present on the original Earth. Oh, sure, in that sense. So yeah, yeah. so you if, do if, believe if, we came we from the said, We do say that living organisms did come from uh, from a, uh, a series of chemicals. So in that sense, absolutely. Obviously, however, if you say if you put it, uh, you know, organi living organisms come from rock, that's not quite doesn't convey the the message that uh, that biologists or chemists are actually. Well, uh, it, it conveys the truth. It doesn't convey the message you want, but it does convey no, the truth. No, it conveys your message, which is, as again, as I said several times tonight, rather disingenuous. You're using uh, an interesting combination of terms that biologists or, or scientists don't use at all, and you're trying to pin those, those, those uh, uh, terms and those concepts on us. Uh, again, I, I, I invite you to uh, change that terminology and to revise the way in which you present uh, scientists' uh, work, because... The first time you do it, it may not be a matter of disingenuity. It may be a matter that you just don't know what you're talking about. But once you've been told several times, uh, it becomes a matter of disingenuity. Oh, I agree. And the textbooks are right. teaching all sorts of things that are disingenuous. And I, I've told them several times. No, I'm talking times. about you, not the textbooks. Okay. You tell me So the next time we're having this debate, please don't talk about uh, uh, living organisms coming from rocks, because otherwise I'll tell people that I told you several times, I correct you several times, you insist. Are you telling me you do not believe we came from the minerals on the earth? Yes, not from rocks. When you, when you talk to a general audience and you say, you know, these people believe that you guys come from rocks, you get an easy laugh. Well, let me, let me people explain. you literally. Let me explain what the textbook says. All right. Planet Earth cooled and, uh, and formed a rocky surface about 4.6 billion years ago. Yeah, I've read that. that. And then it rained on the rocks for millions of years. Mm -hmm. and created a prebiotic soup in the oceans, and this came alive, and we evolved out of that. But, so, uh, yes, they teach we came from a rock. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but, but you know, if you, just, <laughs> if you just, what I'm saying is, the way you present... The way I present it embarrasses you because it strips away all the fluff and the no, feathers and the big words. What it strips away is the process and the facts and the information and the right. truth. All it, it, it lives is a skeleton that is obviously ridiculous. If you just leave the skeleton out there, if you just leave genuine. point A and it point is. Z on the sequence, it should look ridiculous. Because it mm -hmm. is ridiculous. No, it is not because in the, mid <laughs> in the middle there is a lot of other stuff that you are con conveniently right. forgetting to mention. Yeah, because you just, you just mentioned, Ken Hoven, you mentioned uh, water, you mentioned rain, but yet you never say that we also come from water. You don't even mention that. You just say the rock part. Yeah, um, you never mention okay. the whole thing. The water, it, according to the evolution theory, only was served to dissolve the rocks to make the minerals in the prebiotic soup. Only. That's a major thing that the water did. <laughs> That's right. I just don't think I can help you. I mean, if you're that blinded, mm -hmm. I, would, uh, I, I, I'm, I, I call or you have, you have some more comments? Uh, uh, yeah, I just wanted to uh, point out one thing. Um, you said the guy who studied Lucy did a multivariate analysis on the skeleton? Uh, Charles Oxnard, yes. Uh, you can't do a multivariate analysis with an N of 1. With a what? <laughs> with a, a sample size of 1. 
you can do it compared to chimpanzees and compared to humans? Yes, you can. You <laughs> well, you, maybe you should say that next time. You These plants and animals, not only did life evolve from non-living material, then this life had to learn to reproduce itself. Why would any organism want to reproduce more of its own kind when that's only going to increase competition for the food supply? Why didn't they instead evolve the ability to live forever and be happy? Huh? You ever think about that? I was in a debate one time, and the one, we had a question and answer time at the end. The Why would any organism want to reproduce more of its own kind when that's only going to increase competition for the food supply? Why didn't they instead evolve the ability to live forever and be happy? Huh? You ever think about that? I was in well, there's nobody to select from, is there? Natural selection can only select what there is to select from. It's a conservative process. If you worked in a factory that produced cars and your job was to check for defects, you know, kick the tires, slam the doors, etc., drive it around, and you caught every single mistake and you rejected it, how long would it take that process to change the car to an airplane? You say, it'll never change it. That's my point. Natural selection is like a quality control. It makes sure the bad ones don't... Our textbooks, <laughs> oh, yep. They tell the kids they have evidence of evolution from fossils. I don't think so. That is stupid, okay? If you find a fossil in the dirt, all you know is it died. <laughs> you don't know that it had any kids, do you? And you sure don't know that it had different kids. I mean, think about it. You're in a court of law. You bring in a bone to the judge. Judge, I found this bone in the dirt. This is the ancestor of all the humans today. <laughs> they would laugh at you. You don't know that that's the ancestor of anybody, do you? And why on earth would you think a bone in the And you ought to quit worrying about getting a fancier car and a fancier house and start worried about who's going to heaven or hell. Maybe God gave you that good job so you can give some money to missionaries. Not so you can build a bigger, fancier house. Mm -hmm. You know what we need in this country? We need a Christian Barney. How many kids in this town tomorrow are going to be taught evolution? On Discover Channel, Nature Channel, National Geographic, textbooks, library books. How many? Thousands of them. And they're going to use dinosaurs, aren't they? Little four-year-old kids get a book. Hey, boys and girls, dinosaurs lived millions of years ago. Isn't that what they say? Why don't one of you get yourself a purple costume? Get all the neighborhood kids together. Hey, boys and girls. <laughs> We're going to sing now, God loves you, God loves me, he wants you in his family. If you'll ask him now, he'll come into your heart, and of his family you'll be part. Shouldn't they learn that instead? Folks, somebody's got to reach these young kids. You've got to get some videos or something. My material's not copyrighted. You can use mine any way you want. Hey. If you want to get any of my video materials, they're not copyrighted. You can get um, a 15-hour seminar on creation. It was uh, lots of material on stuff, on creation, evolution, dinosaurs. Get some of the debates or the red tapes or the miscellaneous topical series. We want to strengthen your faith in the Word of God. If you're here tonight and you're not saved, if you're watching this video and you're not saved, give me a call. I'll be glad to help you meet the Lord. Our website is drdino.com. Phone number in Pensacola, Florida, 850-479-DINO. We like dinosaurs around there. If you come through Pensacola, stop and visit Dinosaur Adventure Land. If you get a chance to go on the cruise, we'd love to have you come. Why would any organism want to reproduce more of its own kind when that's only going to increase competition for the food supply? Why didn't they instead evolve the ability to live forever and be happy?